this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. It brings you into a power source that you have never experienced before in your life. You talk about the electricity companies. They have all of this power surging through the lines that they can light up our home. But if you can tap into God through prayer, He will cause you to be illuminated far above anything that any electricity company is capable of. He will cause even your face and the expression of your face in the countenance of your being to become so bright that people will know that you have spent time with God. When Moses went into the presence of the Lord, they had to put a cloak over his face, a veil over his face because his face shone so much that it was blinding to the people. And God can do that when he's establishing you. When he is establishing you, you will never open up your mouth to say most of the time who you're serving. People will know you because they'll be able to read you. Regardless of your posture, regardless of your facial expression, regardless of your perceived demeanor, they will be understanding of the fact that they're beholding God on you and on your body, and in your spirit, and in your soul. Many times I'm speaking this because I know this to be factual. Because people have come up to me, people that I've never seen before, and asked me, are you such and such? Are you a man of God? Are you a pastor? I know that God walks with you. I know God is going to do something for you. I know God has called you. I know God has given you a word, and you don't even look like much. And there are times that people will look at you and judge you, not based upon how you're dressed, but based upon what they see in God. I'm not sure if I shared this story many years ago. I was running from my ministry. I was running from the church due to hurt. And I went into a place and I had people call me out and say, we know that you're a man of God while you're here. And they began to tell me why they saw that. And that began to deal with me. And God began to deal with me. But when God is trying to reestablish you or establish you, you will never be comfortable in the place where you are. He will always cause a level of discomfort to come into your heart. That's why some of you are around people that you ought not to be around. And some of them, you're feeling uncomfortable. God has given you instructions not to do certain things while you're around them. Some of you are even in the bit of fornication and adultery and God is speaking to your spirit man to get up out of that posture, to move out of it, to get away with it. And because he loves you so much, he is not going to allow that feeling or his words to depart from your mind, from your life. Because he is trying to dislodge you out of one thing, to establish you firmly in him. And too many times, tragically, those that miss it and miss it. The voice of God. They end up in tragic situations. But that is not the will or the desire of the holy God for you that are listening. I'm preaching to you so that you can make your escape today. So that you can walk in the divine will of God and become established in his word. In him. In him we move. In him we dwell. In him we have our being. We might as well not move at all unless we move in him. God wants you to stick to him. To cleave to him. 
Because the establishment comes when you become, the, even the scripture says that the man shall, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and the two flesh shall become one. What God wants is to become one with you. One. Where when people see you, they see the father in you. I have two daughters, and both of them look like me, but my oldest daughter looks just like me. Except she has hair and not a beard. She's more feminine, feminine in her looks. But when people see her and they have not met me, when they see me, they say, oh, I see the father in you. Or I see your father in you. God wants you to become so close and so established in him that when people look at you, they see him. They see your father. This is the place where God brings you into stability. It doesn't matter what all is going on in your life around you. What does matter is God is stabilizing you. God is stabilizing you so that you can weather the storms of life. Whenever something come up against you, do you easily break and crack under pressure? God is trying to make you to the point that even when pressure comes, you look at it and say, ain't no sweating it. When people look at you, when they see that you're under pressure, they won't see you folding. They won't see you open up your mouth and making rash decisions. But they'll see the hand of, the God, of God directing you, guiding you sustaining you, protecting you, making provisions for you, making ways of escape, divinely providing that which you did not see or know and how it was going to come or how it was going to work out. But God was working it out for your favor behind the scenes and when you get to the end of it, you'll see that he was working all the while for you. It means that I now must become fully dependent upon God. I must thrust myself on him. I must lay my soul. I must lay my body. I must lay my spirit at his feet in full surrender, full trust in his capabilities and his direction. Remember, God is all-knowing. He knows the beginning of a thing as well as the end of a thing. And I and you must now put our lives into his hands for him to establish us and guide us where we need to go. This is the place where lack of unity or cohesiveness cannot exist. This is not a place for babies. But this is a place where maturity is fully developed. This is not a place for the immature. This is not a place for discord or disunity. This is not a place for hatred. This is not a place for anger. This is not a place for playing the blame game. And not a place where third party influences can enter in. And ultimately cause a change of heart or a change of mind. This is not a place for your unresolved issues. This is a place where resolution takes full effect and full place. This is the place when God establishes a matter, he removes all unresolved issues. That's why I take issue with those that are in ministry that are not seeking to resolve their issues. Or not seeking the Father to resolve their issues. They don't know how to reconcile with their brothers or their sisters. And it's even duly alarming when it's in the household of faith amongst those that we walk with. When we don't know how to mature and reconcile our issues. And the thing is you can't have one person that is willing to reconcile and work through an issue. And have another that is not willing to do so. That is a gross display of gross immaturity. Because when you come to maturity in the both 
That's why two cannot walk together unless they agree. You must be agreeing on a solution and a resolution. And you must be willing to compromise, not your standards, but compromise to get to a resolution that is applicable for both parties. And God never wants you to be in discord or disunity with him. Especially when he's establishing you. You must be in perfect unity with God. Because this is the place of strength, as I mentioned earlier. This is the place of power. This is the place when you can lay hands on the sick. And not say that they will recover. But they do recover. And you can see the hand of God. One of the things that I mentioned before, and it's a true statement, and not a boast or brag, but this is because of the Spirit of God. I can walk into a hospital and I can know when the spirit of death is on someone. And I can know when the spirit of death, God wants to rebuke it and remove it and that person be healed. I can also tell when God is saying that this person's time is up and I'm calling them home. Although we would like the first and not the latter. But sometimes true healing comes in God taking someone away that is suffering. Especially if they're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. But when God is trying to establish his healing, that's the time when the enemy brings doubt. And that's the time you have to rebuke it because God's word is firmly established. And God stands by his word to perform it. So this is a place of extreme focus. This means that you can't focus on anything else around you. You must be fully focused on God and God himself. This means that there could be no other distractions. That's why Jesus, when he came to heal someone, he put certain ones out of the room because of their unbelief. That would distract the power of God from operating. And whenever you're in a situation where you have naysayers and people that are talking doubtfully, fearfully. And God, because God is establishing you, you have the right to say, I understand your posture and your position. But I choose to believe God. Whose report shall you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord because if his report says I'm healed, I'm healed. If his report says that I'm going to be wealthy, that I'm going to be wealthy. If his report says that you're going to be a preacher, then you're going to be a preacher. If God's report says that the confusion in your home, I will dispel it. Then the confusion in your home shall be dispelled. All you need to do is stand on the word of God knowing that God is going to bring it to pass. This is the place where your belief and your establishment in God forces the devil out. Listen to this verse. I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I want you to read this in your spare time. And this verse talks about Peter and Jesus. And Jesus said unto Peter, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church the rock the firmness of establishment upon this fact I will build my church and the latter part of that verse and going on down it says and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it the gates of hell shall not defeat it the gates of hell shall not overpower it the gates of hell shall not overwhelm it. The gates of hell will never gain control again. The gates of hell will be defeated upon the establishment that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was saying to Peter, I have established it. God has established it because I honor him, Jesus was saying. 